everybody. If you don't know who I am, my name is Miss Miller. I am your official instructor for keyboard or piano class. The reason I am not at school with you is because I probably just had a baby. Today is, let's see, today's May 30th, so it's summertime. And I know that the end of last school year was really weird. So I'm sure your summer is really interesting too, but I hope you're having a good time. I am already thinking about who's gonna be in my class and what class is gonna be like and how crazy it could be. I have no idea if we're starting school on time right now, what class is like, if we're wearing masks, if desks are separated, who knows what's going on. Nobody knows yet because it's only May in this video, but I'm making this for you so that you can see me, you can see my face, my students that had me last year. I can say hi to you for a second. Um, so that way you're not thinking, okay, Miss Miller just peaced out. Nope, I'm still here. I'm currently very pregnant. My belly's huge. Ugh. I have a big baby in there and I'm ready to get it out. This baby is due at the end of July. So um, I will not be back at school until probably the first week of October, last week of September. So until then, I've made a big binder of things you can work on and things you can do to get yourself a little prepared before I come, okay? Yes, these things are for a grade and Whomever your substitute is at the moment, I still don't know who it is yet. I'm sure they will do a fantastic job. My eighth graders who were in this class last year, you kind of know the drill. You kind of know how I run and how I do things. So make sure you kind of help the other classmates like my first year eighth graders and my seventh graders. Kind of show them around, show them the ropes. Let them know how class is like so that when I return, we'll be ready to go. I also made this video not to just introduce myself, but to go through this paper with you, okay? Your substitute should be reading it with you. They should have read it with you and talked to you about some of it. And I'm making this video to clarify any questions you might have. Now, if I still do this video and you're like, Ms. Miller, I still have a question about something. Don't worry. The question, you can hang on to it. You can email it to me with my email address, which is at the top of this paper, okay? Or you can just wait until I come back because there's no guarantee I can answer that email until I'm officially back at school, all right? So I have the paper here, let's see. It should be two sheets and if it's front and back, that's fine. Remember, this is your syllabus. This is gonna be everything that you need to know to do this piano class. Now, this syllabus is based off of last year's syllabus. Last year, we did not have the coronavirus until the end. <laughs> so, I'm not sure what spacing's like, how many people are at school, I don't know. So, if I read through some of this and you're like, Ms. Miller, we can't do that. We're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to keep this, but we can't touch that. Okay, you can laugh at me because I don't know yet. Because right now, remember, this is May 30th that I'm making this video. So when I come back, I will go through this paper again. Whatever we need to change, we will change, okay? First and foremost, this is your elective. So either you chose this class or you weren't sure what to do for your elective or it was a second choice and they put you in here, okay? This class is meant to be fun. It is meant to be a place to learn, but it's meant to be fun. So um, a lot of the stuff on the syllabus on here is just requirements of what I would expect from you when I'm there, uh, things you will need for the class, and uh, just an understanding of how we roll, what we do. You will never have homework in here, okay? I will say that again, because some of you don't believe me. When I return, when I come, 
you will never have homework. I can't expect you to have homework if you do not have a piano at home. That is not fair to you, okay? However, there will be things you can do at home to help you improve, to help you get better. Something fun for you to do at home, okay? So I will never give you an assignment for homework that you have to take home, you have to do, and you have to bring back to school. Towards the middle and the end of the year, will you want to do some stuff at home, some music stuff at home? Yeah, you probably will. And so I will have fun things for you to do, but none of it will be required. Everything that we do for a grade, we do it in class, so you don't have to worry about it, okay? The top paragraph on here basically tells you everything we're gonna learn. So if you know how to uh, create melody and harmony, like playing a duet, Great thing, you're ahead of the game. If you know what rhythm and tempo is, or how to read music, great. If you know how to make your own music, write your own music, create your own music, great. If you know how to actually play the piano correctly, like where to put your fingers, if you know what note name is what, and how to create chords, if you know how to press certain buttons on the keyboard to make all these cool different sounds, that's all great. That means you're a little ahead of the game. So you'll have extra fun in here. If all that stuff that I just said, you don't know any of it, that's great too, because it's my job to teach that to you. That's basically what we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn how to play on the piano. We're gonna learn basic things about music theory, and we're gonna have fun doing it. That's what that first paragraph says. Same general class expectations. Be in your seat and ready to learn when the bell rings. When I am there, I am not a stickler about tardies. If you're a couple seconds late, it's okay, all right? But if you're taking your sweet time to get to class and you're taking your sweet time to get ready, you get a tardy. So especially with COVID-19 going on right now, I don't know if y'all are gonna have to be walking like single file or what it's gonna be like. So just get where you need to go, take your things out, be ready to learn. Always have your materials. People last year always forgot tape or glue and scissors. Dude, I'm going to give you worksheets that you put into your notebook to create a piano studies interactive notebook. So that way you're not carrying around a folder full of music and you have a notebook and you have this. We put it all in our notebook. If you do not have your materials, that's not gonna be good for you because I end up running out. So make sure you have all of your materials. Listen and follow directions, that's pretty easy. Do your best and hold yourself accountable to complete assignments without constant supervision of the instructor. So this is the cool thing about this class. We are not gonna have a lecture type course where I stand in front of you all the time and I'm telling you what to do and I check your answers and blah, 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 okay? You most often than not are at your keyboard doing your own thing and I help people as they need help, and we roll with the punches. This class, everyone kind of moves at their own pace, but you have to be moving at some kind of pace. So that means you have to hold yourself accountable, meaning I will not be standing over you every day making sure you're practicing on the keyboard or making sure you're completing your assignment in your notebook. You gotta do it, and you have to take the initiative to do it yourself. And if you don't, your grade will suffer. And if you have a bad grade in piano class, that makes me very nervous because it's very easy to get an A in here. Ask the eighth graders who had me last year. If you have like a C, a D, or an F, it's because you're not taking that initiative and you're not doing the work you should be doing. So make sure you are accountable for yourself. Show respect for people and property. Treat others as you want to be treated. That's the golden rule. Treat objects the way you want your objects to be treated. So treat my keyboards, my pianos, the way that you want me to treat your nice things at home, okay? Each keyboard in there is about $200, just one. That is a cheap keyboard. And I know some of y'all look at these and go, $200, some of these are really old and barely work. I know. So you need to be making sure that when you play on it, you're not banging on the keys. When you're finished playing, you clean up and you turn off all the electronics. You're using your own headphones. We're not sharing earbuds and you're not borrowing cl classroom ones. We have some classroom ones, but with COVID-19, I'm almost certain we can't do that anymore. So 
you need to make sure that you're using your own materials when you can and you're taking care of the belongings in the classroom the way that you want me to treat your belongings. During discussions or teaching time, raise your hand and wait to be called on. I'll talk to you more about that when I get there, but I love it when people raise their hand and it's not a teacher thing. It's just, I like to hear what everybody has to say. And if we're all talking at the same time, we can't hear each other. Food or drink, none of that, please. There are times where I might bring snacks. I might bring food. I might bring candy. Eighth graders know I do that. Like we did that when we were learning note names and stuff. We used candy and stuff like that. But as far as eating, we don't do that in here unless we're having like a little party or something. With COVID-19, I really don't know what it's going to be like. If we end up having lunch in the classroom, okay, that's fine. I get that. But we don't just snack next to the keyboard because it will mess up the keyboards. You do not want water by the keyboard. If you spill it, that keyboard's dead. And then we, for some reason, in the back of hallways, always struggle with rats and cockroaches. And if you leave a crumb of food in the room, they will find it and they will all decide to live in the room. Here's what do you need for class? You need a notebook. Doesn't matter what kind. I highly suggest you get a large notebook because we're going to be writing in it, drawing in it, and putting lots of worksheets in it, like gluing worksheets in it. You're gonna want a pencil. I say a pencil because a lot of times people write in pen in this class and then they make mistakes and it's hard to fix them, especially if you're writing like tiny little notes in music. Trying to scratch the note out and then write next to it is very hard for me to read that. It's very hard for you to read that. So you're gonna want pencils. Headphones or earbuds. Earbuds, you know what I'm talking about? The little white earbuds, you can use those. You need to make sure they fit with the adapter. It's not the type, you can't like, uh, pretty much any iPhone that you have right now, the headphones that come with it don't work. It has to be the ones, I wish I had a jack. If I could get one, I'll show you, but you, you could look behind the keyboard and see what type of jack you're gonna need. You're gonna need kind of old school headphones. Cause a lot of times when we're working on our own, if all of us are playing on our keyboard with no headphones, I cannot help you. You have to have headphones. You do get minus points if you don't have headphones because that's not fair to other people who are trying to get their work done, okay? You need scissors, you need glue or tape, doesn't matter to me. And then it says you need colors or markers. Those aren't necessary, but if you have some, bring them because I only have a certain amount to share and we do use them. Okay, and here's the book you will need for this class. Yes, you will have to purchase the book. If you are in this class and it's your first year in this class, you have not taken it with me, then you're gonna get the complete piano player book one, only book one. And it should only be 10 to 15 bucks, if that. And it's by somebody named Kenneth Baker. If you took piano with me last year and you have a book, then you don't have to buy a book. You're good. You have the right book. You have the book you need. If you were with me last year and you lost your book, you're gonna want the complete piano player book one and book two, because you should be in book two. Remember I said earlier, we kind of move at our own pace. Everybody last year who was with me finished book one. So if you had me last year, you need to at least have your same book from last year or The Complete Piano Player Book 1 and Book 2 by Kenneth Baker. These books are sold at a lot of places. Barnes & Noble is one place, but they always run out of stock. So I highly suggest you check out Amazon. Amazon will get it to you quickly. And they will usually let you buy a used book for way cheaper for like five bucks, which is pretty nice. The book that I'm talking about, there's two versions of it as far as the cover, but the new version looks like this. But it won't say Omnibus Edition in the red. It will just say book one, okay? Or book two. So that's the kind of book you need. You have about two weeks to get all these materials. That is plenty of time. So please do not wait until the last minute to try to order this book. It won't come in in time. Please do not wait until the last minute to get your school supplies. They will run out. So make sure in the next two weeks that you have these materials. Last thing to talk about, how grading works in this class. 
because this class is different from other classes. In this class, you can get something called a Carnegie credit. That is fancy for high school credit. So if you take this class in eighth grade and you pass, then you get a high school credit and it goes towards your fine arts credit. Seventh grade, you do not get Carnegie credit. You have to wait till eighth grade to get it. There's two different grading policies on here. You have the people who don't get a Carnegie credit, that's about seventh grade at the bottom. The grades are based off of a 90-10%, meaning 90% of what we do is going to be put into JPAMs, like our activities. Uh, our, we have a weekly grade every week. The weekly grade starts on Monday as a 100, and it will look like a 100 in JPAMs. And then when you complete activities and do what you need to, it stays at a 100. And then... If you forget to do something and you're not doing your work in class, then we start taking points away. So you basically will start the at each nine weeks with an A100. It will look like you have all 100s. And then points get taken away as things go on. Okay? Now, this first nine weeks it will be a little different than that. You'll just have activities to complete. They'll be graded and they'll be put into JPAMs. Your substitute will be doing that. Their instructions are in my little binder that I have for them. But when I return, that's how that will work as far as grades. The other 10% of your grade will be any tests that we take. Like uh, it says here, written exams or performance assessments. Performance assessments are when we get to perform for each other or perform for other things. I don't know if we'll have concerts because that requires playing in public with uh, uh, several people. And with COVID-19 right now, it's still kind of bad. So I know we can't meet in large groups. So, But when, when we're back at school, who knows? It might be way better. So we'll see as far as that goes. But you'll still have little tests to take. And that will be the other 10% of your grade. And all this will go into JPAMs. If you are not familiar with JPAMs, I would start becoming familiar with it. Because I'm going to put... Your weekly lesson plans in there, calendar, dates, things going on, all of your grades. We also have Moodle, which is something you'll be connected to when I come back to school. Moodle is a great resource for you to use. It's really fun, and I'll show it to you. And then I believe, based off of what I'm doing right now, that we will be using Google Classroom. If that's the case and if you end up having a Chromebook, great, because we'll be doing stuff on there too. And that will all help with your grade. If you're getting a Carnegie credit, all of the information I just said is the same. The only difference is the weight values. So 80% of your grade will be that weekly grade. And 20% will be your tests and your performance assessments. Okay. Each nine weeks, we'll take a, a big test and for my 7th grade, that will be 10% of your grade. For my 8th graders, that will be 20% of your grade. But you won't take it each 9 weeks. You'll take, take it each semester. Meaning, in December you'll take a big test. And then in May you'll take a big test. It's very weird how they split it up. And if you're hearing all this information and going, Uh, Miss Miller, what are you talking about? I'll re-explain it to you later when I come back to school. As long as you do what you're supposed to, you're going to have an easy A in here. I promise. Okay. All right. This bottom part of the paper. I know you're probably like, Miss Miller, I've already filled out 500 sheets with my name and my address and my email. Blah, blah. Okay. But it's going to be helpful to me because when I get back, I want to know who's in my class and all the cool things about them as soon as I get back. Okay, so it asks for your, your printed name, your signature, and your date, and then your parent or your guardian's printed name, signature, or date. I want all of that because I want to know that you took this home, you showed it to your parents or your guardians, and that both you and your parents and guardians signed it. Because if you sign it, then you're agreeing to making sure you have all your materials in two weeks and that you understand what you need to do to, to be successful in the class. Okay. Then fill out the rest of the information 
one of the big things in here, it says, um, my student is in seventh or eighth grade, circle that. And then it says, and will or will not need help getting a piano book. Last year, a few people really struggled getting a piano book or they could get the piano book. They just didn't have the money yet. I understand. I understand living paycheck to paycheck and not having the money at the moment. So if you are a person that you know, like you can't get the book right now, just circle the will or will not. And that way, when I come back, I can help you get the class book. Okay. The beginning of this year is going to be weird and it's going to be extra weird because I'm not there teaching you. So I want you to make the best of what you can have fun take care of the equipment in that room, follow directions from your teacher, your substitute, and I will be back very soon. If you have any questions, you can email me or save those questions in your head or write them in your notebook. That way when I come back, I can help you out and I cannot wait to see you. Have a great beginning of the school year.